Season 2 of The Walking Dead is teeming with intriguing moral problems and ethical dilemmas that make armchair philosophers like myself super excited. And the episode 18 Miles Out presents us with a typically overlooked moral problem that many people often feel uncomfortable talking about. The problem in question being Andrea's handling of Beth's suicidal urges. Now before we begin this episode's recap, I'd like to take a brief second to ask you for your support. I pride myself on providing you all with solid entertainment, but sometimes I cover topics that could get demonetized. Self-termination is definitely one of those potential topics. As such, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please check out my channel, subscribe to it, and share it with others. And please consider becoming a channel member. It's literally only $1.99 a month, and it does help me to create more content for all of you. And if I can get enough members, I can eventually start expanding on membership benefits. Like, say, starting a Discord channel? Now, with that shameless capitalistic plug out of the way, here's a recap of the B-plot for 18 Miles Out. Lori finds Beth in a state of severe depression and has a talk with her while she brings her breakfast in bed. Beth explains to her that she doesn't see the point in living or the point in Lori bringing a baby into this fallen world. Lori tries to comfort her by assuring her that she isn't alone, that life can indeed get better, and that people emotionally depend on her existence. When she leaves the room with Beth's plate, she notices the knife missing and she immediately recognizes that Beth is having suicidal thoughts that may turn into a suicide attempt. She promptly takes back the knife out of concern for Beth's safety. She then has Andrea find Maggie so that Maggie can speak to Beth. Now Maggie does the absolute worst thing you can possibly do to any suicidal individual. Instead of listening and accepting Beth's feelings and desires, she essentially guilt trips her while also insulting the very content of her character. What if Dad finds out? What's he gonna do, kill me for committing suicide? Stop being such a brat. He'd die. So would I. This isn't just about you. We all lost Mom. We lose each other and I couldn't stand that. So you give up? Mom would be ashamed to learn she raised such a coward. What about Dad? And me? You could do that to me? I wanna go. In this bed, tonight, with you beside me. Please. And after this exchange, Lori and Andrea debate suicide. The way you take it all for granted. My son was shot. Don't you dare tell me that I take this for granted. You don't get it, do you? Go ahead. Go in there and tell that little girl that everything's going to be OK, just like it is for you. She'll get a husband, a son, baby, boyfriend. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Now this is clearly personal for Andrea as well, considering that Dale robbed her of her own agency in the season finale of season one. Don't pull this, Dale. I'm not pulling anything. If you're staying, I stay too. I don't want you here. Too bad. You don't get to do that. To, to come into somebody's life, make them care, and then just check out. Eventually, Andrea gets the chance to speak to Beth, and she grants her the freedom to choose her own fate. She doesn't encourage Beth, but she doesn't remove her agency either. Aren't you going to say something? Is this what you want? The pain doesn't go away. You just make room for it. And in the end, Beth chooses to live. So the question remains, is Andrea right about self-termination and was she right in the way she handled Beth's troubles? For most people, the act of suicide is not only viewed as being tragic, but it is also often viewed as being immoral. Suicide is an act born from the existence of perpetual misery. Hence, it is the act of attempting to end that suffering when said suffering becomes too much for the individual to bear. Now, I personally believe that anyone who wants to unalive themselves ought to try anything and everything to alleviate their suffering before they attempt self-termination. As far as we know, you only get one life and you owe it to yourself to try to find the light at the end of that dark tunnel known as depression. And we know that in most cases, there is indeed a path to salvation which leads to a life worth living. Suicide is tragic because it is often avoidable and because it doesn't alleviate or remedy suffering. Once you're dead, you won't be there to experience the relief of non-existence. That being said, there are times where there is no path to salvation, where there is no way to end one's deficit in happiness or emotional and physical well-being. 
and it is precisely in those cases where suicide is, without a doubt, a justifiable act. If you can't return to a surplus in mental health, or if you can't at least break even, then it makes no sense to continue running a loss. Suicide merely ends the bleeding, because opting out of life with a small deficit is better than a gargantuan one. The act of forcing someone to stay alive in such a state is the act of torturing them for one's own selfish or ideologically dogmatic or self-righteous motives and beliefs. People don't get to choose how they enter this life, hence they ought to be able to choose the way they exit this plane of existence. No one ought to suffer endlessly for the sake of the emotional well-being and or self-interests of others. Aside from perhaps being responsible for the welfare of children, suicide is not unethical. Living for the sake of merely existing is not a virtue. There really are fates which are worse than death, and there is nothing cowardly about not wanting to experience such a fate. Andrea is absolutely right. Only Beth can choose to live. Only Beth can choose for how long she wants to live. Only Beth gets to decide how she wants to end her life. Beth can change her mind whenever she wants. Anyone guilt tripping her, insulting her, or removing her agency is not being ethical. They are not being empathetic. They are being selfish and I dare say possessive. Sure, Beth self-terminating would deeply hurt her family, but that pain will never compare to the pain someone feels when they no longer want to live but are forced to live anyway. Andrew gave her the choice. Dale did not give her. And after that incident, Beth learned that she did indeed want to live, a lesson that gave her an iron will to live. As a matter of fact, even Lori comes to see that Andrea was right, albeit she doesn't fully give credit to Andrea to a furious Maggie for obvious diplomatic reasons. I'm not going to say she was right, but Beth has made her choice. She wants to live, and now she knows it. It's sometimes you have to cross the line. Some would say Dale was right to quote, save Andrea. But fact of the matter is, had Andrea died at the CDC, she would no longer be suffering. She would have left this world on her own terms, never feeling an ounce of pain and never living to change her mind or regret that decision. She only aborted her suicide attempt because of Dale's emotional manipulation. And some of you think he wasn't using an appeal to emotion fallacy in my Dale video. Believe it or not, you can enter people's lives and you can indeed leave whenever the fuck you want. It's your fucking life and not theirs. If they truly care for you and love you, then they'll respect your desire. That sort of emotional attachment isn't love, it's selfishness and or the feeling of ownership over someone else's life and individuality. The best way to handle someone who is suicidal is to be available and understanding to offer them possible remedies, but to never judge them or coerce them into acts that they do not want to commit. By being accepting and empathetic, you make it far more likely for said person to be open about their feelings. You help to foster an environment where said person is more likely to try different approaches to finding fulfillment, knowing that whatever they choose to do will be accepted. The main reason people don't ever seek help is precisely because of people like Maggie or Dale. Don't be a Maggie. Don't be CDC Dale. Don't be the person who gets your loved one thrown into a psych ward, because I promise you, you'll only end up pushing them further into the arms of depression. You'll only make their self-deletion more probable. Now, there is one final variable we do need to discuss when it comes to this very episode. Beth, if I remember correctly, is roughly 16 years old when she attempted suicide in the show. Now, one could make the argument that she cannot consent to the act of self-termination or assisted termination precisely because female and male brains do not fully mature until 25 years of age. But does a brain need to be fully developed before it can determine whether it wants to exist or not? I mean, this isn't much of a complex problem for the brain to solve. By the age of 18 to 20, research even suggests that the brain is roughly 80 to 90% developed. Teenagers that go to war at roughly the age of 18 already show the capability to make difficult decisions under stressful environments where normal adults would absolutely fail. Is it really a stretch to say that a 16 year old might know when it's time for them to punch out of life? I don't think it's that much of a stretch because it would be no different than placing your hand on a hot stove and then removing it because burning your hand is fucking painful. The will to live isn't some complex or nuanced sensation. You either have it or you don't. And sometimes the best way to find out is to go over the edge just a little bit. That being said, I can understand why some of you would disagree here. There is certainly room for debate insofar as this variable is concerned. 
Anyways, that concludes this gold standard video. If you enjoy this sort of content, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification icon so that you may be notified when I publish a new video. Don't forget to leave me your thoughts in the comment section as well, and please consider becoming a channel member. It's pretty damn cheap, and it helps me to further entertain you. With that said, I'm Captain Gold, and hope to see you in my next gold standard video.